Welcome to Bible Study Hour as we continue our um, topic on the mission of the church. Uh, I've pumped the brakes a little bit on study six, uh, which is who makes disciples, because I wanted to um, kind of tease it out a little bit more and um, not uh, hurry through things just to get the study done. So. Um, we're going to be camping out on uh, that question again, who makes disciples today? Um, but before we do, I want to open uh, with some prayer. So if anybody has anything that uh, we can remember uh, this morning to the Lord for one another, let's uh, start that way. So anything at all? Maybe some updates here in the keel. So a praise for the continuity of the Oh, good. Yeah, good. Anybody heard anything about uh, Betty the Whale by chance? Say that again, Dave. Betty the Whale passed away this past week. Larry Bob. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't I didn't know, know that. that. I know that. Say the name again. Pardon? Say the last name again. DeWale. DeWale? Uh, I've never heard as many years play softball okay. for 20 years I've never been. All right. And and is and Betty passed away. Yes. You're saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. The DeWale family. Here's my detail person to show to you more. Uh what's the husband's name? Larry. Larry. Keogh the Napper's grandson, what's his name again? Franklin. Franklin. Chosen to use prayers and means whereby you continue um, 
um, to bring about your good and perfect will. And so we come uh, because we need you, because we believe uh, in you, we believe that you hear us, and um, uh, by faith we come. And we thank you, Lord, for um, uh, helping little Franklin out. Uh, thank you for the good news that he's um, back home, uh, or that he's home right now. Uh, with his family. So thank you, Lord, for that. Uh, it reminds us of Mark and Emily. Uh, wait as uh, they continue to wait um, eagerly um, upon you uh, on behalf of their little daughter, Eva. We're thankful, Lord, for the good progress that she makes. It's slow, but it's steady. And so we thank you for that. And uh, they um, are looking forward to the day, uh, too, uh, where they are able to bring uh, little Eva um, home. And so we pray that you would um, speed that along and continue to encourage uh, Mark and Emily and um, uh, big brother Isaiah uh, as well, Lord, in this. We pray for the DeWale family, Lord, in the passing of Betty. Um, we pray for her husband, Larry, that you would um, bring the hope of the gospel uh, into his um, mind and heart, that he would be encouraged, uh, that he um, would continue to look to you and uh, find the help uh, that only you can provide. So uh, do that again. We pray for him, for uh, Ron's dad, Lord, as he's going through uh, some health issues that, as Ron said, will uh, have ripple effects with them and uh, causing um, a need to make decisions for the family. So we pray for wisdom and for grace. Um, pray for your spirit to bring your truth to bear uh, upon Ron's dad and his family, that they um, aren't uh, undone uh, by the reality that our bodies, um, like tents, fade away. Uh, but it, it would be a good uh, reminder to be thankful to you uh, for the God who has entered into our brokenness uh, to bring us salvation so that uh, death is not the end uh, for all who are believing in you. So we pray that those thoughts would be dear um, to Ron and his family and that you uh, would grant uh, wisdom as they do make decisions uh, for, his, uh, for his best um, interest. So thank you, Lord, um, uh, for... Uh, not only being able but willing uh, to hear from us and to pick up our burdens and to answer them uh, according to your um, perfect will. Uh, thank you, Lord, for that. Um, thank you that uh, in all of life you do that for us. So make us more mindful of that and uh, have a, a quicker knee jerk to spend time uh, with you and with our brothers and sisters uh, in prayer, acknowledging our dependence upon you and the joy, uh, actually, that that is for us. And so now as we uh, look into your word, as we continue our study on the mission of the church, uh, we pray that these old truths um, would have a freshness to them this morning, uh, that your spirit would uh, open our um, eyes to see things we haven't seen before, uh, that your spirit would take these truths and continue to press them deeper into us so that we can be the people that you've called us to be. And uh, there's so much joy packed into that. So Lord, we pray that you would uh, you do that um, for us and ultimately, Lord, we pray these things so that you be glorified. Um, and uh, we thank you, Lord, uh, for the um, expectation that we have because we know that you hear us and that you answer us according to your good will. And so it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. All right. Um, so here's where we're at. Uh, here's where we've been, um, just so that you can continue to track with us. Um, look it out, and I know uh, the majority of you all have been with us for uh, the duration of the study, uh, a couple of fresh faces, um, so just a little catch up for you here, uh, and then I'm not sure who's viewing online right now, but just a little bit of review, so we spent um, the first studies uh, asking the question, why make disciples, and um, it's that uh, answer that sometimes can just be like a Christian bumper sticker um, to glorify God, but we mean that. Um, we want to be about this because at the end of the day, um, uh, God has created us for him, and the chief end of man is that we glorify God um, and enjoy him forever. And so that's why we make disciples. That's what God is doing from uh, beginning to end in his story. Um, he is moving all things to the, to the right. That's over there for you, uh, towards um, Jesus, uh, where he will um, exalt his son on the, th in the throne room, um, and there will be people from all nations uh, gathered around him on that day. And so that's where God is going, that's what he is doing in the world today, and that's why we want to make, one of the reasons why we want to make um, disciples that we spend a couple of studies looking at what is a disciple. 
Um, because again, this is one of the things that we can just throw around, I think, and it can uh, end up in the category of uh, Christianese or churchese. That's just how church people talk about, and we just talk about it all the time. I'm not quite sure what it means, but a uh, disciple is a learner um, of Jesus uh, in all of life for all of life. Um, it's basically what a uh, disciple is. A disciple also is one who, um, according to the Bible, is one who is uh, looking to make other disciples of Jesus. So this is a all of life, uh, for all of life um, kind of thing, for our joy um, and for the glory of God. Uh, and then study five, we um, looked into how are, how are disciples made. And uh, we hung our hats on uh, four um, hooks of the, the means or the methods that God uses. So do you remember what those are, the, uh, the four P's? How are disciples made? Proclamation of the word. Proclamation of the word. <clears throat> Prayer. Perseverance. 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 And people. Okay, so uh, God doesn't need us. Right? But he invites us into what he's doing. And in his grace, he shows us how he's doing that so that we can have some tracks set down and get somewhere as his people. And that's, that's the way that God works for his people. Uh, he never uh, commands us uh, without enabling us. You know that? So that's, uh, that's the narrative of scripture. Um, God never commands his people without enabling us. So a huge command like make disciples of all nations, that will blow us away and leave us feeling like there's no way. Um, but his spirit's with us, right? And he enables us and he shows us how he does it. And he does it through um, the proclamation of his word, prayer for dependence upon the spirit, through believe it or not, people like me and you, um, and through perseverance, just slugging it out over the long haul. This is what God's doing. Um, and then who makes disciples? How would you answer that? Don't, don't, don't feel like you have to give me the right answer. Just Disciple, make disciples. Okay, yeah, disciples make disciples, um, period, right? Uh, so some of, some of Jesus' disciples... Make disciples or all of Jesus' uh -huh. disciples make disciples? Uh -huh. All. So that's where I'm trying to drill down. Because um, if your um, uh, interaction with um, church life um, was anything like mine, uh, sometimes it's, it's, there's a bifurcation between who makes disciples. It's the professionals do it. Because that's, that's like the world that we swim around in, right? The professionals do this stuff, and then we're along for the ride. Uh, we're cool with what's going on, but I've got other things going on. Um, but according to the um, design that we see in Scripture, all of all disciples make disciples. And so that's what we um, have been spending the last couple of weeks um, thinking through, and that's what we're going to do today. And the Lord willing, we'll transition uh, next Sunday uh, to study number seven. Okay? So, um, one of the four means God uses to make disciples is people. Uh, God's people are all invited and expected. Um, I was trying to come up with another word other than expected because I don't want you to. Uh, I'm care I want to be careful with how guilty you feel, but uh, because I don't think I don't think uh, Jesus uses uh, a guilt motivator. Uh, as uh, to hang a lot of his weight on. Um, but I think the scripture just shows us it's an expectation. Um, so God's people are all invited and expected to be involved in the mission of disciple making, not just the really committed ones. Um, uh, we could get a lot of mileage uh, out of that, but uh, we'll keep rolling. Um, but how are we as God's people to understand our many different roles and gifts within the mission of the church? Um, is the work of, say, proclaiming the word really everyone's work? Uh, and here's where we start to get into um, wanting, to, wanting to thoughtfully uh, consider uh, these truths and these things that we're looking at. Um, all are invited and expected to be involved, okay? Uh, God's given us these means. One of those means is the proclamation of the word, 
So if you're thinking, um, might ask this question, is the work of proclaiming the word really everyone's work? Uh, we have different roles and we have different gifts in the church. So um, last week we answered that question with yes, and nobody, nobody uh, told me in our time no, and nobody talked to me afterwards either. So if you're sitting on and you disagree with that, um, let's, we really want to have a conversation about that. Because if you're a follower of Christ, we want to show you um, the, uh, the means that God has given to you to enjoy his design for you and for his church. So, um, yes, God's people are his agents in prayerfully and perseveringly proclaiming his word. All right. Um, so we, the church, make disciples. Um, God uses his people in personal ways to help others take a step toward salvation and maturity in Christ. So may this truth energize and inspire you. This is where we left off last week, but I feel like I kind of advanced my slides so that we could be done and, you know, get on to other things. So I wanted to pick up where we left off, and this is where we were. God uses his people in personal ways. To help others take a step toward salvation and maturity in Christ. So may this truth energize and inspire you. Because of that, let's be praying that the Lord would grow us in grasping the hope of our salvation and our love for others. Um, let's look at these two passages. Uh, first, Ephesians chapter 1. And then 1 Thessalonians. Ephesians chapter 1 and 1 Thessalonians. We want to be praying that the Lord would grow us in grasping the hope of our salvation and our love for others. Why do we, A, want to be praying that and B, need to be praying that? Why do we want to be praying that? Or if you'd rather answer B, why do we need to be praying that? Why do we find, look at this, look at this passage. Um, actually, back up to 16, because we can see the, the flow of the prayer. Um, Paul, to the church in Ephesus, not to the pastor in Ephesus, to the church in Ephesus, to the husbands and wives and moms and dads and 20-somethings and Followers of Jesus, he says, I don't cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. What's he remembering? Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he's called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the work of his great might that he worked in Christ, and he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So, um, why does the Spirit move Paul to not only pray this, but to write to the Ephesians and tell them that he's praying this? What can we maybe imply? What's implied in that? when we're thinking about um, the mission of the church and what we need to be about as God's people. Maybe think of uh, the beginning of 18, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened so that you may know. Is when In Scripture, I think most of the time when that word know is used, it's in an experiential, relational way, not just a head knowledge sort of thing. So, so why does Paul need to pray this for the church in Ephesus? So they can experience his, uh, I guess his glory. Okay, yep. Yep, so they can experience um, the Lord's glory uh, that explodes into our lives through the gospel and what God's done for us. Somebody else say something? There's a, there's a sense of an assurance Okay, yeah. Yep, so yeah, praying those things would 
move towards an assurance of the destination of what God is doing. That their knowledge would become understanding or wisdom. Okay, yeah, so there's the, the idea of... Head knowledge to heart knowledge. Yeah, yeah, moving it down from head to heart. So what? That they... That would be a motivation, your love okay. of the word or the yeah. love of Christ. Yeah, so when I, when I see these prayers in Scripture, I think, well, that's actually encouraging um, because it's letting us know that we we don't naturally do those things. So when I'm trying to make connections, when we're trying to make connections of what are we supposed to be doing, and we see from Scripture that it says that actually all of God's people are invited in and expected to be about uh, these things of... Um, uh, Prayerfully, perseveringly, proclaiming his word. And then I see this in scripture, so let's be praying that we would that we would have the eyes of our hearts enlightened that you may know. It encourages me that uh, I need I need you to be praying this for me. I need to be praying this for you because these things don't come natural to us. So then when we see in scripture this, it, it kind of emphasizes that as well. Kyo? Yeah, that's and good. Even the step toward a wish that we are desirous, these are all dependent. Yeah. And so that's the, the crux of Ephesians 1. Yeah. Thessalonians and so on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yep, that's good. Cheryl? I also think, and it's right off what Kira's saying, is that you can sense the deep love that Paul has for Christ and his church. Yeah. And I think it, it, that's where I think when you talk about having a love for I think that's where I fail the most. It's easy to tell somebody something, but to love them so much in Christ that you don't want them to miss that yeah. is what you see here. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, for sure. And then, so turn over to 1 Thessalonians 3. Because, or, yeah, because this is exactly what's going on here. Um, another prayer for another church. This time it's the, the saints, the church in uh, Thessalonica. And it says in 1 Thessalonians 3, 12, May the Lord make you increase and in, abound in love for one another and for all. Why does Paul have to pray that for them? Cheryl just told us why. Do you ever feel a lack of love for people around you? Not natural. I mean, probably most of you do, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, and isn't that what it all is? Loving God and loving others. Man, what do I do when I don't when I don't feel that? Well, man, pray it into you and pray it into us. So it's it's meant to be so encouraging. One of the one of the facets of these prayers is that um, we need that. So when you in your seat here think through the mission of the church and then think about your role on Monday morning. Or Thursday afternoon, or whatever it is, and you you just you just see people passing, and you don't your heart's not you know welling up in you for them, and you're just you're hearing this stuff, and I need to be these are people who haven't been delivered yet. They're they're in the domain of darkness. It's not going to end well for them. Lord, why take that minute and and move it from from just this weightiness of guilt? So, well, Lord, you know that's how I am. You remember my frame that I'm dust. And then I'm dependent upon you for all of this. So I pray that you would change me. And it's meant to be an encouraging thing here. So let's be praying that the Lord would grow us in grasping the hope of our salvation and our love for others. So that as he does this, watch what happens in your life. And that's, that's the, he transfers us and he transforms us, right? That's what he's doing. And here's just a good example of how prayer comes into that. Um, so pray that for me, and I'll pray that for you, and we can excitedly wait to see um, what the Lord will do in us. Okay, so today I've got, um, I'm not uh, 
I'm not a big guy on um, steps, but uh, sometimes I think they're helpful. So, um, steps to being the proclaiming people of God. Uh, I've got four of them this morning that we'll work our way through, okay? Um, so first, recognize where you're at on the path of discipleship. Okay, so and we'll use the graphic that we've been using, and I'll uh, we'll throw that up here on the screen. So recognize where you're at on the path of discipleship. Second, recognize your spirit-given role or gifting, because the spirit has given us all different roles and giftings, so that as we are working together, we're moving towards what God is doing. Uh, we're maturing in Christ, we, we're being who he wants us to be. Um, third, recognize where others are at on the path of discipleship. Once again, on that graphic that we'll use, some are far off still. Some are in the uh, domain of darkness. Some, and Scripture talks about this, are close. They're curious. They're near the kingdom. You're not too far off. Others have been by the power of God through the work of Jesus and the application of it to their lives by the Spirit have been transferred into the kingdom of light. But in that, in that graphic, as, as we've said and we'll say again today, we're still in different spots, and we need to be uh, moving from uh, being established to being equipped, and as we'll talk about today, then we start to look around and pull other people with us. So third, recognize where others are at on the path of discipleship, and that's important because we, we tapped into it a little bit last week because if I don't know where you're at, vice versa, it's, it's hard for us to use our words to encourage us to move along. You know, if I don't know what you're going through in life, I don't, I'm just going to be handing out bumper stickers and uh, Bible verses. And it is powerful because it's God's word, but more so I think the narrative of scripture is that we need to create space uh, set aside so that we can grow in our understanding of each other. So that we know where we're at, so that we can help each other out. And then fourth, I couldn't think of another recognize, and sometimes I'm just like this whenever I'm your brain to utilize. It kind of sounds alright. Recognize, utilize. Okay, anyways. Uh, fourth, utilize the wide range of ways that we can be the proclaiming people of God. There's a there's a ton of different ways um, that we can do that. I don't want us to just think that there is one size fits all sort of thing. Because there is Dave. Don't let doing what you can't do stop you from doing what you can do. So keep reaching out. Okay, yeah, you're doing some mental jujitsu in my brain for a second there. Say it again. <laughs> don't let doing what you can't do. Okay, don't let doing what stop you can't do. Stop doing what you can't okay, do. Okay, good, yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's Proper's way of talking about our roles and giftings. I like it. The wide range of ways. There we go. It's <laughs> wide range. That's right. I like it. Okay. The way to do a problem usually comes off over. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, step one, recognize where you're at on the path of discipleship. All right. So, um. Here's the graph we've been using. Um, kind of a lot in there, right? But the basic idea is that God is at work and he is redeeming his people. That before there was time, he knew where they were. But in real time, he does this. He transfers us from the domain of darkness and brings us into the kingdom of his son. And the L over his head is represented of not loser, but learners. That's what a disciple is. It's a learner of Jesus connecting God's word to your life and every single component of your life. So what scripture says, shaped by it, transformed to it. So Jesus in money, Jesus in sex, Jesus in vocation, Jesus in politics, Jesus in friendships, Jesus in environmentalist, all of it. That's, that's the life of a learner. God's word speaks to all of it. Um, so, um, we, we haven't, I don't think, that thing almost brought me down. Um, we, we haven't, uh, I don't think, spent much time in the ease. Um, but I, I want to get into that just a little bit today because, I, again, I think categories are, are helpful for us um, sometimes. So, uh, so, just, you know, this is just one way of doing it. Don't feel like you, you know, have to jam yourself in there somewhere. But um, just 
just in this pathway to the right. Um, if you, by God's grace, have been delivered, um, you're over here. You're in the kingdom of his son. This is uh, uh, Colossians 1 talk, right? Um, uh, so you're uh, being um, established. You're, you're growing in the word. Uh, you're, you're plugging in what God's word says about certain things to your life. Um, in the, the end that you will be equipped, more Colossians 1 stuff, the, the hope um, that we are doing is, um, as a church is so that one day we'll be able to uh, present everyone mature in Christ. Mature means fully equipped or complete for that, that idea and these things. So, so we want to be moving into the area of being established, being equipped, and we'll, we'll put a little bit on uh, that today. So um, just think about, um, I uh, began my journey with Jesus when I was five, so I'm 42, is that right? Wow. <laughs> That's so weird, uh, 42. So that's been a while. So just thinking through then where, where am I at? What does that look like? And you do you do the same. Um, as as I as I think through that, um, and uh, give give some time to thinking through these things and talking to people, uh, I would say that most Christians tend to end up and stay put in the established stage, sensing a lack of ability, um, maybe even a desire and or an understanding as to moving into being people who are equipped so that they themselves feel uh, ready to make disciples of others. Um, so I don't know if that might be true of you, but um, in my experience, most Christians tend to end up and stay put in the established stage. Uh, sensing a lack of ability, like I'm not, you know, I, I don't have all the answers, I don't know how to do hermeneutics, I know what that word means, um, so how can I help other people read and understand the Bible, you know, I'm not there yet, so, um, so maybe a sense of lack of ability or even a desire, um, what, why, why should I be, you know, uh, the one who's equipping people, isn't that uh, the professional's job? Now that one can get a little, if you're not, if you don't have your scripture categories clear, that one can get a little confusing because Ephesians 4 does say that God gives pastors and teachers to the church to do what? Equip the saints to do to the work. To equip the saints to do the work. So there is that idea that there are categories, roles and giftings in how we equip, but, but there's also the idea that so that you will be equipped, so that you can do the work of the ministry. And, and I think part of that work of the ministry is this whole thing here, so that you can begin looking around and equipping others. But you might have a, just, you might sense a lack of ability or even a desire to do that. That's why we need to pray. That's why we see in Scripture. So, Lord, pray that my heart would, would beat for others, because if the most important thing that I can do for anybody in my life is to see by God's grace done there one day, then I do want to be plugging this into wherever people are at on this thing. Help me to look around and care about people and, and want them to be there with me one day. Um, or just an understanding. And again, uh, some of that understanding is like what I just said. Uh, you know, passages say that the pastors should equip. Um, but then there's the end of that passage in other places says that but so that we, uh, parishioners, that old word, can do the work of the ministry actually. Um, so that in our lives, we are the ones who are making disciples. We, the church. So, so anyways, um, just the, this is just for you kind of a moment of personal reflection to kind of see where you're at. Um, and if you're, if you're part of that, um, most Christians, um, you're established, uh, you're familiar with scripture, you know the 66 books, you can find your way around. Uh, might be able to share the gospel with somebody, you're okay doing that. Um, but maybe you're just uh, not in that range of feeling like you are ready uh, to look around and bring people with you. Um, we hope to show you not only today, but I think that's the I think that's the um, the Bible. F I use that word. I don't know, the Bible five points <laughs> that we're all uh, that we're all doing that. Um, 
COVID was a good example of how sometimes we we stay here in the establishment and then when, when, when stuff gets shut down, we're like, kind of feel like we're scrambling. <coughs> Who's supposed to be checking with this person and bring them along and doing this and doing these sorts of things? The church is supposed to be doing that. Um, the Lord uses those things in our life to say, hey, so let's 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 grow a little bit more, um, right? So we can be people who are uh, not only eating the meat, but uh, serving it up for others too. Yeah, Mike, can yeah. you, can you uh, maybe I'm the only one confused, can you go back to the engaged evangelize? Is that, uh, I, I, it almost seemed like we, we don't kick in until we have a little L above us. Mm, yeah, we'll talk are about we, that. Are you going to come back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, so again, this is just uh, this is just one way of talking about where everybody, everybody in the world finds themselves on this pathway. Um, when we talk about discipleship, sometimes we just think that's just church talk, but are your unbelieving family members and friends being discipled? Yeah, for sure. We're all being discipled, right? Everybody pours time and energy into this. Um, and everybody finds themselves here. These, these categories, Marty and everybody else, are, are just helpful ones for us to try to see um, where I'm at, where others are at, and how we can how we can help them uh, the move. And this usually is the way that it goes. And I might as well, since you're asking, I'll unpack it a little bit right now. But it starts engaging. This is just um, um, meeting somebody, uh, talking to them. Um, it, this, lots of you can fill this category with lots of stuff. Maybe it's a um, maybe it's something that we do at the church. Um, you know, like uh, Petra Hoops or something. So we're getting to know people. We would we would categorize that as like an engaging time. But um, if this is what it's all about, then we need a pathway onto that Petra Hoops to bring them into this area of the evangelizing, sharing the gospel with them. Um, we want this to build to that. You do this over the fence with your neighbors. You do that, you know, over the cubicle with your coworkers. Um, you're you're just getting to know people. You're talking, um, and then. Uh, we're looking to share the gospel with them. This is all of God's people, right? Proclaiming the word. This is how it happens. Um, and then by God's grace, he opens their eyes so that they see. He gives them new affections, new desires. Gives them the gift of faith. Transferred into his kingdom. And then they, we are all being established and equipping him. So it's just, don't, don't get, don't get um, uh, too caught up and drawn hard, fast lines because there are there is a lot of this that happens in life, right? So um, it's, it's like, it's not saying you'll, you'll never talk about Jesus when you're engaging with somebody, only until you've established that, and then you talk about Jesus. And then you just, so it doesn't mean these, but just, and I, I know this is, a, uh, I've been swimming around on this for a little bit, and I know I'm just kind of slapping it up on the screen, but that's a, that's a good question, so, yeah. I think instead of that division, there, it would be more of a flow. Yeah. And I think that would probably clarify it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the f yeah, the, the, they tried, and I'm not blaming them, but I think I put myself a week with Matthias Media. We're trying to emphasize the flow with arrows. So, but are you saying the division between here and here? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, there, you, you wouldn't say that, well, I'm, I don't want to lead you like there's a say my answer, but you would say there is a division between being people being delivered well, and not. It's a process, right? Yeah. It's a process. And when yeah. we're engaged in that process, um, that's where the seeds are planted. Yeah. And they come to fruition. Yeah. So I don't know. When I look at that I think it's more of a it's just a continuation of that error. Yeah. The division is Some parts can be confusing because you could get equipped yep. to evangelize. Yes. So there's more of a circle now, circling back. <laughs> you're, you're talking about my last slide here. <laughs> Old study. You're good. You're good. You're good. You can evangelize. Yeah. Are you saying to be evangelized or that those people before the cross are not evangelizing? Right. So then I guess maybe that would be the answer. Yeah. 
I thought we talked about this over dinner Thursday. <laughs> Just kidding, we didn't. We didn't. Yeah, so these are the again, these are these are full categories. Um, this is somebody who who we are finding on the um, the pathway of life and we are uh, evangelizing them, which is to share the gospel to them in a persuasive kind of way. Um, so yeah, what are you asking? I think my well, I think there's just like a division there would be either you're redeemed or you're Are you talking not. about, are you with Evelyn now? No, I think it's just the wording. Which is, I'm not saying you guys are against me, I'm just saying. I think the wording as well. I think okay. you're made or you're evangelized. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, there is there this. Are this are done, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I'm not putting a I'm not putting a timeline on this thing that it has to happen. It's I mean part of that is that is that for P perseverance over a long this may you know this kind of stuff happens over a really long time. I think the the discipleship is the the vantage point of this slide is from the vantage point of the discipling discipleship how the discipleship sort of happens. And as a discipleship occurs, there is a there is a there is not a progression of unbelieving to believing. It is a transformation. It doesn't happen just because woke everybody up and like it. It's not just you know, what I'm saying is there is a there is a mark. Yeah. There is a mark change. Yep. It, it is a it is not a for people ascending to understanding. Yeah. It is a transformative God work. Yeah. Therefore, there is not a progression that is a transformation. But from a disciple's point of view, it is a continuation of engaging, evangelizing, and thereby, for those who are in the L category, we are continuing to work, to establish, to equip, and so on and so forth. So I think yeah. we need to be very careful with regards to the, the description that yeah. is missing, but I think yeah. the vantage point is very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, there's pros and cons, right? Slapping stuff on the, I, but that's why I, I mean that's good. To, that's why I like to have conversation. I really do ask for pushback. I'm not just saying that. So like if there's, yeah, if you get stymied on something, then let's chit chat about it. So that's where you're at. You're, you're just. Yeah, I think what he's saying is what I was trying to say, but obviously he's smarter. So <laughs> 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 there's a moment. It's it's not progression, but the wording. We're almost standing outside of it watching a person who is being yeah. engaged, being evangelized. Then there is salvation. Yeah. yeah. And then they're being established and equipped. Yeah. But we're already in the learner. Yeah. Yeah. So when we talk about yeah, so when we talk about these things, um, we need to remember that that the Lord has already uh, the Lord already has a people, right? He's redeeming those people. Do you know who they are? And neither do I. Right? So that's why that's why uh, something like something like this, yeah, is a for me, um, hopefully for us it can be a just a, a visual to see how how that according to scripture I think um, takes place. Um, not that you have hard, fast lines and categories in your mind when you're talking to your neighbor Frank and you're not engaging with him anymore. Now all of your conversations are only, only have an evangelistic flavor to them. That's not what's meant to be yeah, communicated here. Alan? Yeah, maybe just to be clear on the, on the visual. Yeah. It, it is the learners that are engaging in evangelizing those in the domain of practice. Yeah, right. yes. So you can envision them sowing seeds and yes. watering. Yes, yeah. But God gives the increase yeah. and the growth, and that's when you find yeah. the path yeah. to move into the kingdom of life. Yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Cool, okay. Um, okay, so um, before we before we uh, advance slide to step two, I just, I do want you to think about where you're at. Um, uh, and don't worry about um, how long, uh, like I already, like I said myself, how long you've been 
a follower of Jesus uh, in terms of bumming yourself out that, man, I really should have been doing more um, equipping and looking around for people. It's all right. I mean, this is how God works. So, But I do want you to see where you're at, and I want us to see, uh, as Alan just said, the, the beauty of God's design is that his people are, he uses us, his people, to do this. Um, and he, the, the picture of scripture is that there's a trajectory from uh, being transferred and being transformed such that uh, we, we are, as pastors and teachers, equipping so that you will be equipped, so that you can do, so that we can do the work of the ministry. Those roles will stay, uh, there, there still will be those roles because God won't give everybody uh, a desire uh, to be a pastor and a teacher. Um, so those roles stay put, but I, we have to be careful, though, I think especially in our American church and culture, that we don't fall into that mindset of the professionals do it. So I'll let, I'll let those, those people who have those titles do it, because um, as we'll see in Scripture, that the body, uh, thankfully, um, does the work. So. so, yeah, so recognize where you're at um, on the path. Um, uh, second one is to uh, recognize your spirit-given roles and gifts. Um, so the, the pathway from established to equip is meant for all Christians, no matter the roles and gifts. Uh, this is sort of the stuff that we were just talking about. Um, the reason is so that the saints can be equipped for the work of ministry for building up the body. That's Ephesians 4.11. Um, See the same uh, idea of this too in 2 Peter 1, so that we wouldn't be defective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Peter is talking um, to the church there. They need to be um, growing or adding these things to their faith. Uh, that's, that's broadly speaking, that's to the church at large. It's not just to a specific category because they're the ones who are supposed to be making disciples, but it's, it's back to God's big um, idea and design. Um, so, the, so the pathway from established to equipped is meant for all Christians, no matter their roles and gifts, so that the saints can be equipped for the work of the ministry, building up the body, so that we wouldn't be ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, sometimes uh, the pathway gets blocked up when we focus only on one area of gifting, like teaching. Um, so let me, let me explain a little bit more what I'm saying here. If, um, if our hope and desire in the picture from uh, Scripture, the design is that disciples are to be, uh, as learners, uh, growing, becoming established in their faith uh, so that they then, as the church, can begin to equip people. Like Alan said, we now can go and um, we're engaging, we're evangelizing, and we're even looking around and helping others around us, establishing them. So it's an all-encompassing sort of thing. Um, sometimes one of the challenges that at least I've seen in uh, my experience in the church is um, that the only uh, pathway that sometimes we hold out for people is just being a teacher. But what if you don't feel like you have a gift in teaching? But if it's the last thing that you want to do, stand up in front of people um, and in a kind of a, an official uh, standpoint, um, teach. So sometimes the path to becoming equipped gets stymied, blocked a little bit. If that's the only thing that we're saying, this is where you can end. Now we have to be careful there too, because I'm, I'm just trying to put these tensions in front of us to talk about them, that there is the understanding and expectation that all of God's people will be teaching. Right? So at the end of Romans, Paul says, I'm so encouraged because the church is able to teach one another. So there is that, and that should make sense if you're a disciple, right? You're learning of Jesus. You're helping those around you in lots of different ways. So there is that idea in Scripture that all of God's people, all of disciples, um, should be teaching. And that's that P of proclaiming the word in lots of different ways, okay? So I'm just... Try to put that stuff on the, on the table and acknowledge those tensions. Um, the reason I want to is because Scripture says that there's all kinds of other gifting, a, a, a wide uh, variety and array of gifting. Things like hospitality, 
and generosity and prophecy, which I think is speaking the right word of God at just the right time. Leadership, benevolence, encouragement, etc. So, if, if the only way that the church is trying to establish and therefore equip people is so that they become teachers, what about the people who don't sense they have that desire and gifting in teaching? What do they do? Well, we, we, we want to open pathways to all of these other sorts of things because God uses all of these different things, doesn't he? Uh, to bring people along wherever they're at in that pathway of life. Hospitality, generosity, prophecy, leadership, benevolence, encouragement, all of those sorts of things are, are part of what's, what's going on. So it's important for you to recognize your spirit given role and gift. Um, you do that by rolling up your sleeves and getting involved. Uh, surveys are, yeah, they're okay, but I mean, but you just get involved and you ask your brothers and sisters, you know, um, how do you think God's gifted you? What's that look like in my life? And um, you know, that's, that's a helpful thing for us to for us to recognize there, your spirit given roles and gifts. Um, third is recognize where others are at on the pathway of discipleship. Um, and again, remember this is, the big question is who makes disciples? I'm saying that we, the church does. Um, and this is an important part of that. Again, recognize where others are at on the pathway of discipleship. Um, here's where, uh, here's the, the graphic again. Um, uh, because I think it does can 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 be helpful for us as we think through these sorts of things. And I want I, we have to be careful though because as soon as we put a a category, we just want to slot people there, but it's not always that clean and simple. Um, so as you think about people in your life, as you think about your neighbors right now, God is sovereign, right? And Scripture says that He draws lines around us. And so it, he, we all have a sphere, therefore, of influence as salt and light. So who has God put in your sphere? So just think about it for a minute. You know, neighbors, co-workers, family members, Billy at the grocery store, you know. Well, who's in your life and where are they at on this thing? Um... Are, would you say that they're, you know, um, connected with other Christians? If not, then they're not there. So where are they? Well, I've engaged with them. They know my name. Hey, that's Mike. Oh, and that's Billy. Okay. So I, and have I, have I ever had an opportunity to sprinkle in something into the conversation about the Lord that helps me kind of have some idea of, of where he or she's at? Um... And again, we don't want to, Jesus is so helpful here because as we see him move and act in scripture, he doesn't objectify people, right? He acknowledges that they're a human made in the image of God who will spend eternity somewhere. And me and you need to do that too. So I'm just saying that because I want us to be careful with how we slot people. Uh, we just need to see who's in, who are they, where are they at on this thing, you know? Um, God helps us out by giving us things like baptism, Okay, because baptism is it's our inauguration into the family of God. That's, so he identifies that that person is part of, it's no longer over here. From our perspective, right, uh, they're, they're part of the kingdom of God's son now. They're part of the church, so I know that that's where they're at. Um, what? Like, what? I said baptism. I'm trying to give us, sometimes there's visuals that we can see. Sometimes it's a, it's a. Baptism is their salvation? No. I, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to say that sometimes we have to, in our process of getting to know people, sometimes it's going to feel, I'm not quite sure where they're at. But the Lord does give us, uh, helps us see visually what they're actually saying. They're saying that God has saved me. I want to follow Jesus. I'm identifying with him and with his church in baptism. It's so like the Antone boys last Sunday, right? So now you don't drill them with, hey, you said that, but that's part of who we are now with Luke and Jordan. And it's just a helpful way of us understanding that this is where they're at. They've said this, um, and it's a way that we can help each other 
move to the right. So just little visuals like that. Eric? Uh, I think it's helpful too to remember that we're not uh, doing for one person, like having one project, and it's our full responsibility. Yeah. The people of God are doing. And for, absolutely, it's yeah. It's like Paul, you know, I, Paul planted Paul's fault. Yeah. God gave growth. Uh, but that's helpful to me to realize. Yeah. I might engage someone one day. Yeah. Then the next day, you know, someone else, Keo, takes them and teaches them a little something. Right? Yeah. So I, I, I like that family idea that it's has to different be. gifts and different people. Yeah, the family of God, the community of saints is huge for us, right? Because I really do think it'll either kind of, uh, it, it's, it's having the feel or it's not. And so if I know that I'm not in this by myself and God doesn't need me, but he uses me in just my little way. And, but then I know he uses the rest of these people around me in their little way. It just, I think it frees us up to then engage and to say, hey, I, I'm, this is just where I'm at and how I feel like the Spirit is moving in me. This is my gifting. But I know if I don't use my gifting, you know, and if I do, then look what happens. Right? We grow, and it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. So, so yeah, just, um, um, and I recognize, as I tell you to recognize, that um, I've been thinking through these things. So I'm just trying, to, just trying to introduce some of these concepts to us to get us some lily pads, stepping stones onto, into what God um, is asking us uh, to be doing. So recognize where others are at on the pathway of discipleship. Um, it took me uh, four plus years, I think, to have a gospel conversation with one of my neighbors one time. Some of that's probably just me being a weenie. Um, but some of that is I'm just trying to build up relationships with people. I don't know, you know? So um, it happens over a long, a long period of time and, and not just by ourselves with, with the Lord as well. And then I'll just leave us off with uh, this one today, and then we'll be done because it's 1030 on the nose. Uh, fourth, uh, this is to Eric's, Eric's point, um, mine as well. Utilize the wide range of ways that we can be the proclaiming people of God. And so this is what I mean by that. If God in His grace uses um, His people, uh, or praying and um, proclaiming over a long period of time, what, what are some ways that that can look like? Um, it can be as simple as letting somebody know that you're praying for them. That's huge in lots of different ways. And this happens in all, just think about that graphic again from people who are the furthest away from the kingdom, maybe they're being engaged, just say, tell a neighbor that you're praying for them and watch that do something. Um, uh, I'm glad that's not the only option on the table. Again, this this kind of, for me, it, it works, um, works, I don't know if that's the best way of saying it, but if, if somebody's not a, a believer, they're just really struggling with life, because there's this cycle of life, I just want to let them know that, man, I'm so glad that that's not the only way that we can do life. What do you mean by that? Well, God shows us this design is so much better than, I've done that that you're doing too, and I, I'm so glad that God frees us up from that. So can I just shift? So just a way of just, you know, that's not just, again, these aren't just fast, hard categories that we have to stay in. Sometimes we want to share that with a believer, right, who needs to be jogged in. Uh, or when I went through a similar struggle, the Lord really encouraged me with this work, and I share it with you. How do you, uh, proclaiming people of God isn't just standing up on a box and preaching to somebody. Uh, how about writing a letter? I'm writing you to tell you how encouraged I was by your act of kindness towards me. It's easy to see how you've been impacted by God's kindness towards you. Uh, so that's, that's something where you're encouraging somebody, you're building them up as being a proclaiming uh, person. That's through, uh, uh, how about this following today? Uh, that point in the sermon really challenged me. What do you think about it? That's, I mean, we can be a proclaiming people of God and helping each other. This is discipleship. This is what it looks like. And, or you could just uh, throw a book at somebody <laughs> in a gentle way. Uh, this book really helped me. This is hoping that you find it helpful, too. Um, but these really are, I mean, if we're not being relational people, then all this stuff is going to humanly speaking, fall flat. So this is, this is the beauty of 
growing in our community with each other, strengthening one another, getting to know people out there so that we can have uh, some of the, the joy of God's design for being the people who he's called to make disciples. So, um, again, uh, a, lot, a lot of this I'm ho uh, hoping and praying and intending it to be uh, conversation starters. Um, so uh, let's, let's talk about this stuff with each other, uh, with me if you have any questions about it or, or pushbacks or things like that. Um, but, but again, thinking, thinking through the reality of it, who makes disciples, we the church make disciples, um, by the means that God has given to us, and um, really it is simply seeing where we're at on that path, and looking around where are people at on that path, and how can I use those means that God has given to us to just help somebody take a step to the right, and wherever they might find themselves, and that's the, that's the beauty of discipleship. So let me pray for us, and, and we'll head on out. So Lord, thank you uh, again for your grace to us that we're here to uh, celebrate today and to receive again uh, through the um, time with you and with uh, your, your people today. Uh, we do pray that you would help us to grow in our understanding of the beauty of the gospel, how you have, have broken in on us and you have saved us. Um, and we thank you, Lord, for that. So help us to grow in experiencing the beauty of that such that our hearts are then um, moved uh, towards you and towards others. And help us to, as Paul prayed for the church in uh, Thessalonia, uh, that we would grow in our love for one another and for everybody. Lord, we, we need you to do that for us. We thank you that you have said that you would. Uh, so thank you, Lord. Um, thank you, Lord, for these things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.